Hello everyone, Justin Vakula here with video number 12 of my Stoic Philosophy video series. This one is about attention and focus, a follow up to my video about New Year's resolutions. You can find me online at justinvakula.com, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I'm experimenting with new recording softwares. There's been some glitches in previous videos, including some black lines on the screen, so hopefully this will be going better today. So let's get to it. Today's focus is on Book 4, Chapter 12 of Epictetus' Discourses titled On Attention. I feel that this is a relevant one to this topic and a follow-up on discussion about New Year's resolutions and our thoughts about them. He notes that it is difficult to regain attention and keep good habits if we don't keep up with goals. That it's easy to set ourselves back by not keeping in line with goals that we set for ourselves. He writes, when you relax your attention for a while, do not fancy you will recover it whenever you please. But remember this, that because of your fault of today, your affairs must necessarily be in a worse condition on future occasions. First, and this is the gravest matter of all, a habit arises in you of not paying attention, and next the habit of deferring attention. So you get into the habit of putting off from one time to another the happy and benefiting life that would enable you to live and continue to live in conformity with nature. So here, mindset is very important. We're going to stick with the plans we have for ourselves, stick with our values, stick with our goals, and continue progressing, not just to be lax, not to give up on something, to actually keep on a schedule, to focus on our lives, to pay attention what are do in what we are doing, and performing well. A good personal standard, high quality of life, high quality for ourselves, as this is the only life that we have to live. We're to focus on our mind, our ruling faculty as Epictetus, writes that we're not to be a disgrace to ourselves, that we're going to set a high standard for ourselves and keep to it, to live a good, content life. He wonders what is stopping us from progress and starting a new goal. He encourages us to take action. This is a recurring theme in Stoic philosophy, that many people can have excuses. They can talk about, oh, how miserable and terrible things are. That people are catastrophizing. They're thinking they can't rise to greatness. But the Stoic philosophy has a very hopeful message that no matter what situation you are in life, that we can still have excellence, that we can be a good person, we can seek virtue, we can apply our values and live a good life with fewer desires, fewer worries, and focusing on the right things, which is a topic of this chapter. He writes, I want to play today. What is to stop you then, provided you attend? I want to sing. What is to stop you then, provided you attend? For surely there is no part in life in which attention does not extend. For if you will do a thing worse by attending, and better by not attending, is there anything in life which is best performed by inattentive people? Does a carpenter, by not attending, do his work more accurately? Does a helmsman, by not attending, steer more safely? Or is any other, even of the less important functions, performed better by inattention? Do you not perceive that when you have let your mind stray, it is no longer in your power to call it back, either to propriety or self-respect or moderation, but you do everything that occurs to you, you follow your inclinations. So here, we want to pay attention, we want to focus, we want to keep to our standards, keep to our goals, and perform well. We want to pay attention, we want to have this high personal standard to take action, not just to say that we're going to do something, not to think that we're going to do well if we're not focusing on the process. We're not simply going to will it, say, okay, I'm going to do well today, but yet not actually take action and not apply our concepts and not focus on what we're doing. We're to keep this focus. We're to give a good effort in our lives to make changes happen and to work toward having better results. While the result might be out of our control, we can focus on the progress, the process to our progress and likely have a better result. So where are we to start? We're to start with our values and first principles while working toward our goals and applying ourselves in anything that we do, any role that we find ourselves in. Epictetus writes, To what then must I attend? Why? In the first place, those universal principles which you must always have at hand so that you do not sleep or get up or drink or eat or approach another man without them, that no one is master of another's choice. It is in choice alone that good and evil lie. No one, therefore, has the power either to procure me good or to involve me in evil, but I alone have authority over myself with regard to these things. So we're talking once again about self-reliance. It's a common theme in the text here, that we're to focus on ourselves, we're to have a right mindset, 
so that we can attain our goals to live this good life, to not be bothered and excessively worried by the things outside of us that we don't have control over, that we can learn, we can study, we can really apply ourselves and aspire to what we would like within reason. What can bother people? What can set them astray? Well, it's the opinion of others, he writes. We're not going to be troubled by externals, and we shouldn't be worried about the criticism from others who happen to be ignorant. Another common theme in the text is that the multitudes aren't necessarily good to look to for advice, that they don't have the training, they don't have the education, and everybody just simply wants to comment on others. People think that they're in this great perspective, even though that they're not. They might have these ideas about what a good life is, how to live their lives, how others should live their lives, but they can be incorrect on this, although they'll be very, very sure about their intentions and their thoughts about how others should live. They can simply be wrong. So if we focus on ourselves, we have the right goals, we're a trained person here, we can live this good life and aspire to greatness in all that we do. Epictetus writes, Since these then are secure for me, what need have I to be troubled about externals? What tyrant can intimidate me? What disease? What poverty? What obstacle? But I have not pleased so-and-so. Is he my action then? Is he my judgment? No, why do I trouble myself any further about him then? But he is thought to be a man of some consequence. Let him look to that, and they who think him so. But I have one whom I must please, to whom I must submit, whom I must obey. God, and after him myself. He has entrusted me to myself, and made my choice subject to myself alone, having given me the rules for the right use of it. And if I follow these according to rigorous reasoning, I pay no regard to anyone who says anything different, and give no thought to anyone who argues from equivocal premises. Why then am I irritated by those who criticize me in the more serious matters? What is the reason for this perturbation? So we're focusing on ourselves. He writes here of God of being, being this force of nature, uh, the logos, this creative force that the Stoics thought of in modern times as non-religious individuals. Well, we might not take that perspective, but we're still wanting to live in accordance with nature, in accordance with how we see the world and how the world is, not simply these mistaken impressions that we might have as he talks about, there can be a lot of things that can set us back, that can distract us from our goals and living a good life, but we're not to be bogged down by this. We want to focus on ourselves and our own standards, and that's what's important. Not be worried about all these external things, these excuses that people might have, and this terrible mindset that can stop them from living a good life. We're to cast away anxieties, cast away worries, and not be bogged down by excessive anxiety, excessive worry. Surely we might be worried about this and that, but nothing excessive that's going to bog us down. We want to focus on ourselves, focus what's inside our control rather than focusing on what is without. That might prevent us from aspiring to greatness here. Epictetus wants us to use our time wisely to have a balance to determine what is the right time and place for certain actions. But one criticism in the Stoic philosophy sometimes is that it doesn't talk much about leisure, pleasure, that it focuses maybe too much on this hardcore style of virtue, this hardcore style of self-reliance, but here we have some words about balance, about moderation, about things other than study and this rigorous life, which is often portrayed here in the Stoic philosophy and put forth. He writes, in addition to this, we must remember who we are, what name we bear, and endeavor to direct our appropriate actions according to the rightful demands of our social relationships. We must remember what is the proper time to sing and to play in what company and what would be out of place, lest our companions despise us, and we despise ourselves, when to joke, whom to laugh at, and when to associate with others, and with whom. And when we do associate with others, how to preserve our own character. Wherever you deviate from any of these rules, the damage is immediate, not from anything external, but from the very action itself. So here we're still applying our virtue in all areas of life, we're still displaying good character, but we want to seek a balance in what we do maybe in our professional lives, in our trades, when we're in one environment and another, how are we to present ourselves? In some instances, we're going to be presenting ourselves differently. We're going to have a different role. Perhaps a person who works as a school teacher is going to act differently around students compared to friends or in other social situations. We're to determine what is this right time and place, as he writes about, that we're not to irritate others, that we're going to behave properly in different areas of life. So have this balance and be aware of our circumstances and surroundings, to not just have a one-size-fits-all appearance around others, although we're still to keep good character and virtue in our actions. And one of the last paragraphs here, there's a talk about 
procrastination, to not procrastinate, to not behave poorly today, that we're to start, or that, we're not to behave poorly today, yes, that if it is to our advantage tomorrow, it is much more so today, Epictetus writes. But as it is, when you say, I will begin to pay attention tomorrow, you should know that what you are really saying is this, I will be shameless, inopportune, and abject today. It will be in the power of others to cause me distress. I will get angry. I will be envious today. See how many evils you are permitting yourself. But if it is well for you to pay attention tomorrow, how much better would it be today? If it is to your advantage tomorrow, it is much more so today, so that you may be able to do the same again tomorrow, and not put it off once more to the day after tomorrow. So don't procrastinate. We want to be well today, to set our goals, to live a good life, to have a good mindset, to not be bogged down, to make progress in our lives, and aspire to personal greatness. And with that, I hope that you like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Leave your comments below. You can find me online, justinpakula.com, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you'd like to support me and my work, feel free to donate at justinpakula.com. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned for more.